to Troy here for day four of the five day consciousness hacking challenge. It's great. I'm grateful to have you here, whether you're joining live or we have Michelle with me again. Thanks for joining Michelle. And for anybody watching the recording, this session today is, is one of my favorites. It's also one of the most challenging um, in that um, where we go is into the places that we don't necessarily want to go. We avoid them. We um, we project out. We blame other people. We we push the attention away. They call it the shadow for a reason. Is because ultimately we um, at some point in our life had felt something that we was intense and so much so that the mind had then had to compartmentalize it and push it into our unconscious so that we didn't have to experience it ongoing. But that's tripping this up. That's in the way. It's creating um, limitations, whether it's a limiting belief. That's causing a whole range of different um, limitations on who it is that we can become. And so today we're going to explore how do we efficiently and effectively release that stuck energy. And so before we get into that, and so we call it a process. Um, we're going to process uh, our contractions, process our triggers. And the space that we get on the other side of that, um, the, the more of ourselves and more vitality that we get back is really profound. But before we drop into that, um, I'm going to start with, as we normally do, just by connecting with the moment. And so I'm here live with Michelle. And so, Michelle, are you happy to do a rounds with me to get us started? Sure. <laughs> Thank you. All right. So just closing down our eyes. And so then we're just tuning in to the moment. And as we have been doing, we become aware of the energy or the emotion that's most alive for us in this moment. And so often with so many things pulling on our attention out into the external world, we, we find ourselves unconsciously resisting what is arising to meet the demands of the external world. until the point where the emotion has to build up so much so that it can negatively impact on us. And so by tuning in and connecting with the moment and feeling what is there, we drop in to a flow. We connect to self. And so meeting this moment, what am I feeling in this moment? Let's so say there's a, an anxiousness, there's an anxious energy there. And so feeling that, meeting it and allowing it without any resistance, without going into a story, just meet it and feel it. And Michelle, tuning into this moment, what are you feeling in this moment? I'm feeling some low level anxiety. And so we feel that, we meet that. And again, without going into a story, We just allow it. And so then tuning into this moment. What am I feeling in this moment? I'm feeling an ease. 
So it's like more of a stillness. And so we feel that. We call it out, we label it, and we feel it. And Michelle, in this moment, what are you feeling in this moment? I'm feeling a sense of hope. And so we feel that. We meet it, and we just allow it, hope. We allow it to wash over us. And then tuning into this moment, Steve, what are you feeling in this moment? Uh, feeling accomplished. Accomplished. And so we feel that. We allow that. Without going into a story, we just feel accomplished. And so then tuning into this moment. I feel sense of joy. And so just tuning in to the qualities of that. Like for me, it feels more expansive than contracted. It feels light as opposed to heavy. It feels more still as opposed to busy. Also aware of like a, a ringing in my ears, not like a tinnitus ringing. It's more a ringing that I become aware of when I connect to the energy. And it's almost like a, a physical bubbling up of energy through my body. It feels like joy. So these are the qualities of this moment that show up for me as joy. And so we feel that. An aliveness of energy. And Michelle, what are you feeling in this moment? I feel a sense of spaciousness, like a sense of opening as my heart starts to relax, the barriers around my heart start to relax. And so we feel that. We meet it consciously and we feel it. And Steve, what are you feeling in this moment? I'm feeling present. Present. What are the curious, what the qualities of presence is? Is it more expansive than contracted? Yeah, expansive. And I feel a, a fullness in my belly. Fullness, yeah. An opening in the chest. Beautiful. That feeling of fullness, wholeness. And so we feel that. As we connect to the moment and as we feel what is there, we tune into the energy. What was contracted 
busy, heavy, mind dominated, can very quickly shift to still, fullness, wholeness, a sense of knowing, a sense of peace. As we tune into the underlying energy, the energy that underlies all things, the self. Thank you for meeting the moment with me, connecting with the moment. And so jumping in, just got a few slides that I want to run through just to help hold me on track. It's great to see just quickly a few of us in the challenge. Um, Bryony, um, it's great to see. Thank you for jumping in, Jan, Steve, Bobsy. Michelle. So we've got a few of us playing the game, which is great. Playing the game of measuring and optimizing. All right. So today we're going to run a process. So we talked yesterday about, about mapping our, tracking our contractions, contracting our triggers. And today we're going to look at well, how do we break those patterns? How do we how do we heal? And so we also did the um, releasing tent, releasing emotion meditation. So we're going to do a process. I want to talk about just briefly. I'll talk about it in more detail tomorrow uh, for coaches. Uh, and those willing, wanting to go deeper into this work, there's the opportunity to get more involved. So I want to share what that looks like. As we set up a community, there's already a community, but as we continue to grow the community of people that are tracking uh, our key biometrics that are uh, doing the work to understand where we're holding unresolved emotional wounds and then supporting each other to, to heal. And from, from a coach's perspective, how we, the opportunities to use the platform to do that. So we talked yesterday, like I said, about the, the, the patterns. So contractions and triggers that will form throughout adolescence that um, often trigger thoughts, which trigger emotions, which trigger behaviors. And we find ourselves stuck in these loops, the code that we're running in our in our heads and the thing is that we uh, learn and we'll talk more about this tomorrow is our, our brains are neuroplastic in meaning that we can change the software that's actually running and so just because uh, we were conditioned that we were coded a certain way doesn't mean to say that we have to continue to live with that code and so part of what we're exploring today is well how do we how do we change our code and we go deeper into that tomorrow, but this is one of the foundational elements is like we need to break, we need to learn how to uninstall code that doesn't support us to be the person that we want to be. And we learned that, as we talked about yesterday, a lot of our code is laid down, is formed, is installed between zero and seven years of age from our parents um, and our environment at that time. We learned a lot about the world. And unless we or uh, we do the work and unless we, uh, we call it, um, get on the path, um, unless we are moving towards uh, awakening, then we'll just exist and live out that conditioning. And it's almost like being asleep, not knowing that there's a whole other way of being. And so we are at this unique point in in history where from the present moment, we're able to identify where we're holding unresolved emotional wounds and, and heal it. And we talked about yesterday, even if we had the best parents in the world, uh, we would still have emotional wounds. We would still have emotional trauma. 
and the only person that can meet ourself in the way that we needed to be met is ourselves retrospectively. And so we're learning this new way of relating to ourselves. And so in that, we recognize that there are um, a multitude of different parts that fall. And we talk about Richard Schwartz's work with internal family systems, inner child work. There's a number of different um, branches or modalities that explore this work. Um, and so what we learn and what we are teaching here is that to be more of the qualities of self, of the I am, which is that presence, which is connected to that energy that we feel when we connect to the moment, is connecting to the present moment, which is connecting to our, our best self. And it's with that we meet parts of himself that have been contracted into a story and we heal so that more and more we can be that aware presence connected to the energy whole still with a sense of knowing and so uh within our platform we talked about a daily log yesterday and so as we complete our logs um and so like one of the core values of this you know and for the coaches that are listening to this the opportunity to get involved and and use the platform with your your clients um is this is a really like it's an interceptive look at the code that we're running each day and i won't go into it too much but we talked about it yesterday um and then allowing somebody on the inside to support um because often we can't see the patterns we're running because we're in the patterns and so as we look at the contractions i didn't look at any contractions yesterday but as we look at contractions they appear on this healing page and so it says no contractions found it's but it's still loading you'll see you know i've got a host of contractions and then as we process them you know we can um, close them off we're just in the process of updating this soon we'll have the ability to add comments um that both the coach and the the uh the person being um, processed are we able to see but this is like a list of the work that we have to do and so we're going to jump in now and process and i have um mentioned yesterday invited michelle to see if we could if she'd be willing to process and she's kindly accepted i want to appreciate though that this is um something that's normally done in a one-on-one -on -one situation this is uh demonstrational uh for demonstration of purposes what we're going to do today and i'll explain it and if we get into this and it it does bring up an emotion and that's what it's designed to do is um to release emotion then we might pause and we'll take it offline but i just wanted to you know show you um, how we would do that and so thank you michelle for one i'll jump in with you in a sec i'll just create some context around what we've got, we've got what we're going to do and so we'll start with the meditation in the same way we just connected to the moment we'll do the same and so it's about connecting with self um so michelle in self uh, me in self and from there we will create a container a safe container so we'll become aware of each other's energy in in awareness as the self and within this container we make it known to the parts of Michelle so these are the parts that at different points throughout her um adolescence and getting to the age that she is they they weren't supported it's like in the way that we connect to the moment 
and we feel the energy that's alive in that moment, we, we, we essentially processing that um, energy in real time. Throughout our life, we have a multitude of peak emotional experiences where A, we weren't supported, and we didn't know how to actually process the intensity of the emotion that was happening at the time, and we weren't supported to, to do that. And in a number of cases, it can be our caregivers, the ones that are supposed to be supporting that are causing the, the contraction, the contracting that energy in and not supporting us to process it. And so it forms a part. And what uh, Richard Swartz um, suggests is those parts have parts as well. And those exiles may have manager um, parts or firefighter parts. We talked about those yesterday that are there to support it. But parts have parts. And what we learn is that there are no bad parts. It's just that part, at our time in our life, the part of us that had to take on a role, it learned about the reality. And that reality might be that if I do this, then that's not okay. I'm not safe. And so this part's role is to keep us safe. And so what was learned to keep us safe back then, in many cases, doesn't keep us safe now. And so in the same way, we connect to the moment and we process, we feel what's alive there. As self, we go back retrospectively and we be with these parts and we don't try to fix, we don't try to change, we don't try to, in most cases, we don't even try to um, give them a voice to express or um, make somebody else wrong. We just bring love and compassion to them. And we be there with them and we feel what they're feeling. A, we let them know that we see them. I see you. So they feel seen. B is that I'm, I'm, I'm here with you. So they're, they're not alone. So they feel supported. And three is that I feel, I feel what you feel. And it's a lot. And so we bring that compassion. And we feel it with them. And those three things, in many cases, is enough for that part of us to open up and let go of that energy that they're holding. And it can be that simple. Um, that's a, that's a, the fundamentals of it. But in saying that, you know, sometimes there's different parts at play. And so uh, in those parts, like manager parts, for example, that get in the way that are trying to fix or trying to judge. Anyway, there are some nuances to this that um, we we manage along the way. But I just, I guess, what I want to point out here is that it's not about fixing or making that part wrong. It's really just about being with it and helping it to. Um, be seen, be supported, and to feel what they're feeling. Because it's what they uh, didn't get at that time. Feeling into if there's anything else that I want to share on this before we jump into it. One thing to be aware of is that we can... Uh, it may be that there's a, a number of different parts that we, I'm not sure if you, where, where you're from, you've got nut grass. Nut grass is like little nuts that are under the ground and they send up shoots and they connect it under the ground. There's the whole network of different nuts. Sometimes you pull up one nut grass and then you get a whole host of other different nuts. It can be like that as well. There's, they, they, these parts can be interconnected. That's why we call it internal family systems. There's, it can be quite complex, but you can get one, you can get a whole host. There's one thing to point out. Another thing to point out is that um, sometimes um, as we go into the initial process and what we do is we go into self, we create, create the container, 
Then I'll ask Michelle to feel into you know, a contraction. And she might have a contraction, and maybe that's what we process, with just um, being live and doing this demonstration. It's like, well, what's the feeling there? We focus in on the feeling. And as we feel that, we become aware of any insights or memories that come into, into, into mind. And there may not be any, and that's okay. Um, at the same time, we recognize there's a part of her feeling what it is that she's feeling because um, we're not self. And so my role is to help support Michelle to maintain self and also um, support her to manage the part. What I love about this uh, modality is there comes a time where as you get more experiences, you can actually um, maintain self and process the part without a support person, without a facilitator. And so learning this is really powerful because you can then process yourself because really it is about meeting yourself. And so as like for me throughout the day and from the people that I work with, it's like um, supporting them to create the habit of whenever you're feeling anything, it's not actually you, the self. It's a part of you. And so it's like throughout the day connecting, oh, there's a part of me that's feeling this. Oh, I see you. Um, I'm here with you. And I feel what you're feeling. And it can move through. Um, well, how you doing, Michelle? I'm a little nervous. <laughs> it's understandable. That's totally normal. Let's just play with it, you know, like I, I gave a sort of an overview of it. And I guess what we're looking at here is just a live demonstration. And it it can bring up a lot of emotion. Um, that doesn't necessarily mean it has to, it, it um, is always physically um, demonstrated. But it, it, what I often find, though, is what was it, like a tightness in the body that often feels like a knot or like weight on the shoulders or in the chest carrying over then as we do the process, it, um, it just lets go. And so there's a physical release. It's just more space. So we move more into self. And that's the intention here is to release the energy. One of the things I didn't mention is then we often ask that part, if you, I'm here with you now and you're not alone, if you didn't have to take on this role, of protecting us in this way because I'm here, what would you like to do? Depending on the age, most often they want to go and play. It's like, so they go and play. And it's that integration back into self. So it's integrating these parts. All right. So we'll start with a little meditation. Um, again, getting into self. I like to... Uh, the way that we normally would do that is the way that we start. But instead of going turnabout, we'll just um, feel into what you're feeling in this moment. And we'll just keep dropping in around that. Is that okay? Yeah. In this moment, I feel there's a, if I can describe it physically, there's definitely a chest tightening which moves up to the throat. So there's fear that um, there's definitely some fear underlying that. Yeah. So let's be with that. Let's meet that. Let's just feel that fear. And without going into a story around why it's there, let's just feel fear. So we meet it and we feel it. And it feels like a lot for me. It feels like a lot of energy. And so we just allow that energy, that fear. Just be with it. And so then we tune into this moment. What are you feeling in this moment? Mm. 
a little contracted. The energy's moved down just into the heart center. And that feels like a, a bit of a hard ball. If you were to tune into what the emotion is that underlies that, what would you say that it is? Hurt. Hurt. And so let's feel that hurt. And we, without going into a story, without trying to change it, or we just feel hurt tuning into that emotion, the energy emotion, and just allowing it. Without any resistance, we feel it. And so then tuning into this moment, what are you feeling in this moment? Uh, this is a sense of an opening. Uh, opening towards a sense of lightness. Like an emerging. So let's feel that. I'm just allow it. Without trying to hold on to it, we push against. We just meet it and feel it. And so then in this moment, what are you feeling in this moment? I like to say more peaceful. I'm not quite at peaceful yet, but I can feel myself moving towards peace. Mm -hmm. So what are the qualities of peace? Is it more still? More still, there's more space. Yeah. There's a softening. Yeah. So we allow that. And so from this, from that softening, that spaciousness, I'm here in self, in that stillness, and I'm here to support. So I want to get you to get a sense of me here and I of you there. So we feel each other's energy in awareness. And in doing so, we create a container, a safe space. And we make it known to the parts of Michelle that this is a safe space and that we're here to support, that we're here to help. And it's okay to be seen. And so, Michelle, I'm, I know you know the qualities of self. And so I'm going to be asking you at different times to move into self. But then also to relate to heart. And I'm here to help. And there's nothing necessarily that we need to think about. We just here in awareness together.
And so as the invitation is to feel into a recent contraction that you had, And I'm curious, as you do that, what the underlying emotion is, what's the underlying feeling? Uh, so when I think about the most recent contractions, like that was an obvious contraction, are you do going to feel? Yeah. And so let's feel that. Let's acknowledge that. Just allow that to land. That fear. And I'm curious, as you do that, do any insights or memories come into your awareness at a time that maybe you felt something similar to this? Um, definitely as a teenager. Yeah. Do you want details? You don't need details. We can um, just recognize there's a part of you that was feeling fear. Um, for the purpose of this exercise, given that we're doing a live demonstration, normally we would go into the details. Uh, Do you feel I don't mind. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Cool. Yep. So right. the memory that comes back, there's, there's a couple of, well, the memory that comes back was I was a teenager, 16, and I got pregnant and was too afraid to tell my parents, so I didn't tell them. And so I, was, I chose to give the baby up for adoption. But during that time of being pregnant, I was so ashamed and felt so, just so ashamed that I'd made such a terrible mistake like I was very very hard on myself and it was just it was a small town and everybody knew there was no secret it was like everybody knew so there was no hiding yeah thank you for sharing and so let's just allow that to land for a moment that feeling that energy recognizing that there's a part of you that's still feeling that fear. And so as self, Michelle and self, myself, let's go back and be with Michelle at that time, 16. We let her know that we see her. And we appreciate how intense that situation was. We can feel what she's feeling. She's no longer alone in feeling that. And we just feel it. Feels like a lot for her to 
be there. And for me, I get a sense of my body shaking. It's a lot for a young girl to have to experience alone. How does she feel knowing that we are here? Does it feel as intense or less intense? Um, it's almost like it's more intense because I don't have to stuff those emotions down. Yeah. And just so sort of go into survival mode. Yeah. So we just be here with her and we feel it with her. And is there anything that you're called to do to support her as self? Or is there anything that she would like to ask for as support from self? Um, I, I think it's mainly confirmation that everything will be okay. Yeah. And how do you feel telling her that? I feel grounded and compassionate. So are you able to tell her that? Yeah. We just allow that. How does she feel hearing that? There's relief, but yeah, there's definitely in my vision, there's definitely just overwhelming emotion. Yeah. Like relief, relief. Yeah. I know for me, I feel a um, sense of overwhelming love for her and just um, compassion that she's been holding on and experiencing this all alone. And I just feel to let her know that she's done nothing wrong. And trying to, at 16, trying to figure out and understand the world. And um, yeah, so much, so much pressure and yeah I feel to give her a hug is that okay yeah and just let her know that I feel what she's feeling and it's not okay that she's had to be in this all by herself
and we feel it together. Is there anything that you feel uh, to tell her as self? Um, <clears throat> it's, it's more, oh, what do I feel to tell her? That she is loved that she is supported. That she will heal. To make mistakes is okay. They're our biggest, they're biggest opportunities for growth. How does she feel hearing that? There's a sense of safety and calm. And I think it's, it's a more positive outlook. So, Yeah, like a light at the end of the tunnel, really. And so if we were to tune in with her, then what is she feeling? What's the underlying emotion that's there for her at the moment? And there may be a myriad of different emotions. Resilience. Resilience. Like, this is tough, but she can get through it. Yeah. And so if we tune back into that initial fear, Where's that at now? Is it still present or is it something else? Is it more resilient? Hmm. There is definitely more resilience. It actually feels more supportive. That um, I think you might remember when I told you about this particular contraction, the moment I could feel everyone's attention zooming in on me, I get a bit of stage fright. Mm. And I just go, they're all looking at me. And I think it's just even being in this space, knowing... Uh, like on one hand, I'd know that they're no one's going to judgment, they're all beautiful people, but I felt like I was the center of judgment. Mm. So it's shifted that framework a bit that they're not there to judge, they're just there to hold space. Yeah. And um 
ultimately everybody else becomes irrelevant almost like npcs non-player characters in this experience and there really is only you and and her self and her and so at any point if she feels that um fear then you're here to meet her it's like oh hey i see you i'm here for you let's feel what this is we'll feel it together and so a as we build this habit we become more tuned to being in self but we also um yeah we're able to be there for our parts and there comes a point where that energy that she's feeling will dissolve um and it'll just stop being a thing and it's like if she's 16 if she didn't have to protect you in this way what would she like to go and do what would she want to do as a 16 year old girl Let's be happy hang out with friends go swimming yeah yeah so let's just feel into that for a moment because you've got this now what these parts don't realize is that you are now and I'm not sure of your exact age but in your 30 50 in your 30. <laughs> no I'm 50 you're now 50 right and so yeah. you've got this and she's done an amazing job keeping you safe till now but you've got this and you've got her and she's okay to go and play and so whenever she if she ever comes up again how do you how do you know that is that you'll feel her oh fear like hey i see you i'm here for you you know like let's feel this together and then there'll come a point where she'll just go and play yeah and so, so good. If, thank you um i just have one question so oh. often when these things come up in the moment you kind of have to put that aside well i feel like i have to put that aside to get through the moment and so would you say as soon as that opportunity is over go back and revisit so what 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 we see here is there's another part that comes in and says yeah but and so it's like hey we see you there um and so as we um we recognize that part um, what does that part feel it feels like um i don't know concerned it's trying to manage the situation um so we recognize there's another part there because it's not self what will happen um more and more to answer your question though is that you'll just be able to express yourself in those situations there won't be that contraction because that energy that was that fear of people judging you is is no longer um, no longer there it's the same charge mm. it's, yeah it's being released and like what we need to often do not often sometimes it can they can just fully release and go and play but sometimes we need to build trust with these parts and say hey no no i have got this i am here now and so um if you still feel her at any point know that the more time that you meet her um if even not in the moment because you know you've got people in front of you but at another time it's like in support her then she will um go and play and let go of that energy but then we we become aware of other parts that jump in like other parts play a role it's like yeah but you know you need you you you're not able to do this and it's kind of like that's a manager part that was protecting that part that didn't want you to be exposed because then she would have to feel that fear it's like hey um just acknowledging you um i've got her now and that um 
I can be there to protect her. I appreciate you know, the incredible work that you've done protecting her to now, but I've got her now. Is it okay if you give me some space so that I can um, support her? And so you have a conversation with them. Often they'll say, yeah, sure. So this is like, um, like a mean, it's a new way of relating to ourselves. Whenever we feel anything, it's actually not us itself. It's, it's a part. And as we get better at recognizing the parts, then we build relationships with them until they can integrate. They can go away so that we can inhabit this body, so that we can be enjoying the benefit of being here in this body. And so that's what we're building within Arm Connected is, uh, you know, it's the dashboard where we can track our key metrics, but then also the support structure so that we can be processing ourselves. There's, there's, we all have so much, so many parts that we want to be more efficient at um, building a support structure so that we can be processing each other. It's like, hey, I've contracted here. You know, can we run a quick process on that? It's like release that energy. I want to talk more about that tomorrow from a like a coach's perspective because I know you're both in the facilitation space. Um, whether you would be interested, um, then also for the people that are watching that aren't coaches that want to get more involved in in you know, tracking and optimizing their key biometrics. Um, then also learning how to be processed. We don't necessarily learn how to, how to be processed, but have an experience of being processed, but then learning how to you know, process another person. Because it's not, what I love about internal family systems, it's not like I need to be a trained psychotherapist that's done you know six years of study. Um, it's a relatively simple process. And the more that we develop our ability to be able to have empathy and compassion, which is what we're doing at the beginning of each of these sessions. And the more we start feeling and relating with how the other person feeling and just learning how to guide them, which is something that can be trained. Um, we did run over, I was intending to do uh, observing the mind meditation today and then doing it again tomorrow. So we might just um, do that tomorrow. Is that um, reasonable? where we will do the uh, observing the mind. So essentially we're building on releasing tension, right breathing, releasing emotion, and then we start um, using a single point focus as an anchor to then observe the mind. We realize that as we hold our attention still, we'll talk more about this tomorrow, we get drawn into a story, but the more we refocus and we recommit the longer we're able to hold our attention still to we come to the point where we move outside the mind um, and this is as part of a seated practice so just a different way to access self yeah any questions thanks so much michelle no pleasure thanks for helping Thank you, uh, Michelle. I feel um, honoured to be in part of the process. Thanks, Dave. Thank you, Steve. Cool. So my, my encouragement, Michelle, is to just connect with her, um, tune in with her over the coming days. Um, it might be that she um, energetically becomes lighter and lighter as she goes and plays and um, and then maybe I know you and I are catching up one on one. You sign up as a VIP. So what I'm, what I'm feeling to do is maybe we look at some of the other parts that are around her that were set up to support her, and we we run some processes on on them. Excellent. Thanks. Cool. All right. Big love to you both. I'll see you tomorrow. Tomorrow's session is really cool. We look at beliefs and habits and um, neuroplasticity of the brain and well, what code do we want to be running? Yeah. All right, big love. Thanks, Troy. Thanks, Troy. Thanks, Steve. Thanks, Michelle.